accessibility is for everyone. No one should feel ashamed or embarrassed for using the tools they need to navigate the world. Your worth is not determined by your size or ability. You deserve to feel comfortable and confident wherever you go. It's it's such surface level like nothingness. Like all these state all these statements are coming from such a privileged environment, dude. I mean, just think about the situation that we're in right now. We're literally talking about an obese woman talking about how you deserve to have accessibility devices because you're so fat you physically are unable to walk anymore while being in a country that e literally enabled you to be obese to begin with. Like, I, you can't make this up, dude. Like, the, the, all the words that she just said are like the tip of the iceberg, and it's just meant to make you feel good. And then everything below it is literally, like, the layers and layers and layers of the iceberg are, like, seeding into your back. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they're bleeding you out, dude. Because... This, this doesn't mean anything. You don't deserve anything, dude. Being in a westernized country, being in America is such an anomaly, okay? Like, thank God we're all in America, right? I don't know where you're from, but like, thank God I'm from America, where we have these things, where we have elevator access, where we have these scooters, these mobilized scooters that you can go into Home Goods for, and you can sit down. And usually these stores don't really have that many. There's usually like two or three or four of them at most, right? But like, taking up one, like if you're, look, it's fine if you need accessibility tools. I have no problem with people needing accessibility tools, but I'm sick of people thinking that the way you get to those accessibility tools is equal. It's obviously not. How somebody gets to that accessibility tool is going to be, people are gonna judge that differently based on how another person gets there. Like for instance, if you're a guy and you don't have legs and you feel like you were born without legs or something happened, you got into industrial actions or something like that, and you need this, like I get it. I, I bro, fine, whatever, bro. I, I have no problem with that. I'm not even one of these people that has a problem with people using crutches in the sense of like social crutches. Like, if you were somebody that was going to school under affirmative action because you were black and you got a scholarship or whatever, like you got into a school because you were black, that's fucking awesome. I mean, granted, I don't agree with it, but still, like, I think it's great. Like all that, all that when Biden was giving out that like student, student loan forgiveness and like, I fundamentally disagreed with that. I don't think the taxpayer should have to pick up the cost of somebody that voluntarily went to school. I don't, I don't agree with that. But like, dude, if you have the option, take it 100%. What are you going to be like a better person, morally speaking, because you decided that you weren't going to take the free $20,000? No, suck me off, dude. I'm taking that $20,000, right? So I'm not even one of these people that says you can't use crutches in any circumstances, dude. Go ahead. If it's there and it's it's open to you, you should use it. But I just think it's so interesting that like a person like this could be as overweighted as they are and bragging about how you should and you deserve to do things. Dude, where you live in America, okay? Like if go to like any, like a hundred years ago, this shit would have been like so far fetched to say like you deserve to have this looking at an overweight woman in a chair like this where people are like literally sucking on the skins of potatoes to try to get sustenance while they were selling their daughter off for three horseshoes to like try to make sure that the harvest that they had next year was eligible for them to eat for like another six months so like our standards have really really changed in the last few years and i think it's a great thing it really shows us how successful we are as a society to where we can even say stuff like this so this is a crazy thing to say but within the vacuum of like america it's not that bad like this <laughs> we literally have people nowadays that are that are so incredibly obese we've, we've succeeded so hard that people are eating so much that they're telling you it's okay to use accessibility devices because you can't walk because you ate so much think about that we are doing a good job. We are doing so good here in America, dude. But I just think it's like really interesting because like, first of all, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve. That's all I ever hear from these people. You don't deserve anything, okay? Okay, if you have like the internet or whatever the fuck, this is all privileges. Other countries don't have this. So you should feel happy that you have this stuff, right? But whatever. And then also you should feel com confident. I don't even understand how you would even try to feel confident. You would think that if somebody was like, I don't know how much this woman weighs, like three or 400 pounds easily. Um, I don't understand how you are telling me that you're confident and comfortable at this size. Like, Jesus, bro. You you really sitting there telling me that you're confident and comfortable simultaneously while you're this size, literally unable to walk? I think this would be like the most uncomfortable situation I'd be in ever. Or ability. You deserve to feel comfortable and confident wherever you go. Using mobility aids is a sign of strength and self-care. Oh, okay. 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 Hear me out. It is a sign of self-care in the sense of like you're acknowledging that you need to use these items. That's 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 where that's where the self-care comes from. But it's not it's it's kind of really, really disingenuous because if you're saying that it's overall self-care because you're using access accessibility devices, because you're acknowledging that you need them, and that the idea that you have to admit to yourself that you need to use accessibility devices is powerful, which I agree, but you're failing to acknowledge 
a very key idea here, which is that if you lost weight, you wouldn't have to use this. Or if you did have to use it while you lost weight, it would be severely reduced, if that makes any sense. Like, it's fine that you have to use these. I don't have a problem with people using accessibility devices. I think we should have more accessibility devices. Great. Taxpayer money. Go right to it, right? But I think that if you're sitting here telling me that it's self-care, but you're not ignoring the ginormity of weight loss, the ginormity of diet and exercise of being consistent on that particular front to reduce the ability, to reduce the amount of like accessibility devices that you need to use organically, I just think that's really, really crazy. I think it's really, really crazy. I think this woman says a lot of stuff that people probably agree with surface level, but like if you look below the surface, it's like almost meaningless information. It's probably a little bit uh, evil a little bit like the information is a little bit terrible in my opinion um, because this is like the Trojan horse right this is like the thing that gets your guard down to let the thing in and then underneath all of it it's actually really really malicious right because if you're saying that it's not a sign of weakness or a sign of like it's a sign of self-care to use this stuff like I agree but then simultaneously dude why are you doing nothing to actually physically help yourself you know like if you're putting a necklace around your neck and you can no longer put that necklace around your neck but six months earlier you could and you think instead of losing weight in order to fit that necklace around your neck you instead go to Amazon and buy a necklace extender in order to company your extra neck you do realize that like all you're doing is kicking the can down the road instead of like actually solving the problem that's an issue we have okay and for some reason these people have like okay be careful all right like if you have an ideology and every time you think about your ideology it's always external external solutions in the sense of like every time you think about something it's never your fault it's always something else and it's like it's always someone else or some society right these people have a tendency of going it's society that has to be responsible for me it's society that has to have these accessibility devices it's society it's you it's me it's all these other people that have to be the ones that put these things in place to accompany me all you're actually doing is you're taking the responsibility off yourself and you're instead putting it on somebody else be careful doing that because they might be looking at this and go, oh, it's a very tough idea. Like, I'm very powerful in, in understanding that everybody else has to be responsible. No, it's not. That's a very easy thing to understand. That's like, that is the most easy thing you could possibly understand. Um, it's very hard. It's very difficult to look internally and go, okay, what can I do to improve my situation? What can I do in order to try to like alleviate my situation right now instead of having to rely on everybody else, right? It's like guys that sit there and go like, oh, I'm not six foot three or I'm not six foot two. And that's the reason why women don't like me. Like I'm five nine. That's the reason why women don't like me. No, like you're, you're saying like, that's a tough thing for you to recognize. You're going like, oh, like that's what, that's the reason why women don't like you. That's what, that's the reason why women don't want to be with me. Dude, no, it's, that's like, that's the easiest circumstance you can ever put yourself in now you've literally seeded all of the responsibility that you could have had on yourself onto this like far-fetched idea that only women like six foot three guys right instead of actually working on yourself and like i don't know like shaving or doing your dishes and like wearing clothes that actually like mesh with your body size and things such and so forth like it's very easy for these people to say that but under the guise of saying that like you're powerful and strong for understanding that no you're weak that's terrible information that's a weak mindset you're literally kicking the can down the road for people that are not even there and you're, you're claiming that you're strong for that you're not you're not and like, be careful because like it takes actual deliberate work to understand the circumstances that you're in and actually do something about it. Not weakness or defeat. Don't let anyone make you feel otherwise. Yeah, don't listen to any other opinions, basically. Like, these people are perpetually in echo chambers, dude. It's so sad because, like, all you ever hear in these communities is just yes queen over and over and over again. And you would think it would get, like, boring after a while. You have a whole bunch of people that, like, never actually say anything other. Dude, like, actually expand your, uh, expand your, stop tunnel visiting yourself and actually go to communities that are going to disagree with you. Don't let anyone else's opinions or judgments hold you back from living your life to the fullest. Ah, man, it's, I'm sorry, dude. That is such a crazy ass statement, dude. Living your life to the fullest. Would anybody ever define living your life to the fullest like this? Is this really like the, the bar for living your life fullest, dude? Having your husband walk you through the aisles at home goods while you sit in a cart because you're physically unable to walk when you could just lose weight? Like... Like I said, it's fine. If you want to use accessibility tools and they're there for you and you need to use them, no shit, no shame, go ahead, use them, right? But I just think like, if you're bragging about how powerful you are and you're telling me that you're a great, amazing, beautiful person, whilst telling me that you're literally putting yourself in echo chambers where you're not listening to anybody else that may or may not have information that, that could benefit you, you're literally telling me that like people are saying, hey, this might be bad for you. And you're just turning around going like, huh? 
I, just, I don't know who said something. Somebody say something? Huh. I don't know who could have said anything at all. I'm perfect exactly the way I am because I'm in around a community of people that just all agree with me about literally everything. That's not going to help you. And you're literally admitting that you're putting yourself in these circumstances to continuously enable bad behavior. You were like, what is your husband doing? I get that he's like really, really obese too. But like somebody needs to step up and it should be the people that are in your life the most. It shouldn't be the internet. I mean, granted, the internet is probably like a really good place to get some good information, obviously. But like, if you're going to have this particular type of lifestyle, does your husband not think that this isn't the problem at all? Like he's very overweight too, right? I think he's like actually smaller than her, which is really crazy, by the way, because he's like tall. He's like a big giant man, but she's still bigger than him, which is crazy. But uh, I hear... All the time that people, when you're in relationships, like, are you not concerned that your significant other has no problem with the lifestyle that you're living? Like, if you were in a, if you were in a relationship with somebody and you were dating this guy or you were dating a girl and that girl was a heroin addict, would you not have a problem with that? Would you not, like, bring it up to them and go, hey, I don't think this is a very good idea. Your teeth are literally falling out. You have holes in your legs. I don't know what's going on with this. You need to stop taking this heroin. Or would you just, like, continue letting them take that heroin? Because, like, this is basically the same thing. Now, granted, heroin's probably getting giving you immediate effects right there, right? Like, negative effects right there. And obesity is maybe not something that you're going to have to deal with for, like, a, a maybe a long time. I mean, even though you're literally dealing with it right here. But still, the point I'm making is it's more accepted to be obese than it is to do heroin, obviously. But they're in the same category in the sense of, like, what damage it's doing to your body. They're both the same in the sense of, like, very bad behavior. And it's continued bad behavior. But you would tolerate one but you wouldn't tolerate the other. And it's your job when you're in a relationship with somebody to be the person to enlighten that other person. Like, hey, this is not good, okay? Like, you're literally dying. This needs to be something we address today. Capable and worthy of all the things you desire. But like, obviously you're not capable, right? You are capable and worthy of all the things you desire. And by the way, you don't even believe that. You Maybe she's being very, very like, general here because okay most people probably desire same stuff in the sense of like you desire a good family a nice life you want to have a good amount of money you want to be secure you want this and this and this but obviously she doesn't mean the people that are like want to drive into a crowd of people right that's not what she means because if you deserve that then you would be totally fine with that person saying that so i'm not going to put words into her mouth then they got like a misread it but it is very word it is very she should probably preference that but whatever okay um, you are capable and worthy of all the things you desire. Obviously, you're not capable of fucking walking, right? Are you, you don't care about walking anymore? Is that, like, just not something you want to do anymore? And, like, don't let other people's judgments hold you back from living your life to the fullest. Like, how can we... This is like, this is the lowest bar for living your life to the fullest. But, you know what? Jay Bay is very beautiful. She's a specimen of human being. And I think that she should continue living. I just hope that she continues living for a very, very, very long time. Your body is worthy of respect and- You cannot decide- Okay, look. You can respect your own body. That's fine. You can totally respect your own body. I don't know how you decide how you define that word respect. Obviously, like, she has a very different definition of respect compared to somebody like me. And it's okay. We all disrespect our bodies in different ways every single day, right? Like, maybe you overindulged in coffee. Maybe you had too much coffee today. That's disrespecting your body. Maybe you let a girl pee in your mouth. That's disrespectful to your body. But in the moment, it was okay, right? So we all have moments and times in our lives where things happen to us and we purposely disrespect our bodies, but that's okay, right? And this scenario, sitting there and go, I, you, you know, you deserve respect for your body. First of all, you are the only one that is entitled to respect your body. And sometimes a lot of people don't even do that. And then obviously, right? You cannot expect other people to respect your body. You cannot expect other people to give you respect. Like, you should always give everybody a baseline level of respect, right? Obviously. But for some people, dude, that's kind of far-fetched because some people are maybe mean or assholes or people that just, you know, why would I ever respect somebody like this, right? In this scenario, if they said, like, my body deserves respect to the same, same degree as your body, I'd be looking at that person like, dude, get off of me, dude. No, obviously not. Compared to me, like, I'm, I respect my body more than her, obviously, um, in my opinion. Care, regardless of its size or shape, you have the right to move through the world with ease and confidence. No, you don't. Where do you, look, bro, you can say this stuff so easily here in America or wherever she lives in the West. But, like, dude, try to say that to somebody that was, like, in Vietnam that was, like, born without legs and working in the fucking rice field or something like that. Or somebody that has, like, literally, that had, doesn't have legs or arms or whatever the fuck. Or somebody that has, like, 
no road access or they have to like climb through mountains or whatever. Like it's not, it's very easy for you to say this in a society where we have great infrastructure for the most part that allows people to be able to take cars, vehicles, elevators, all this stuff. A lot of countries don't have that shit. So when you say this shit, this is a very privileged stance. Um, it's fine to say it because like, I know you live in America, but like, dude, even in America, we still struggle with a lot of this shit. So like you should, instead of trying to make it easier, like, don't get me wrong. It should be okay that we have accessibility devices. I think we should have a lot of those, right? Taxpayer monies, you know, whatever, like make things accessible, right? But like, dude, it's so easy to seed over all your responsibility for yourself onto the government or society or like all these other things by saying like you deserve to move through the world with ease by literally making your making it as hard as possible to make it to, for us to make it easy for you to, to move through the world. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's like literally walking around that's like walking around as Optimus Prime, like actually as the Transformer and going, this building should be made for me. Why is this building not made for me? That's basically what you're doing. You're you're so ridiculously sized compared to everything else. And yet you still want us to do something about it, which is fine. Like, I, well, it's not fine. I got to, bro, I got to stop. Like, I got to stop being so nice. It's not fine. Like, you should be trying to make your life as great as possible for yourself as much as you can and within limitations. And instead of like pushing it all on everybody else, because like that's, it's almost never going to happen. And it, like, you're going to be waiting for a very long time. And then you're going to blame people. You're going to blame everybody else for that shit. In the meantime, accessibility is a human right. It's not, it's, oh, oh, maybe in America, maybe in America, dude, maybe in America. Not a privilege. It just depends. It just depends, dude. It just really, really depends. Like what you mean by it's a right and not a privilege, man, because like, accessibility is not going to be for everybody. And some people are just going to be left out because some people are so incredibly disadvantaged when it comes to the ability for them to move throughout the world. It's just so far fetched to create something for them. So we, what we, what we tend to do is make things for the most people. And then as, as like the biggest group of people, and then the second biggest group of people and the third biggest group of people, and usually by that fourth, fifth, sixth group of people, we don't make anything for them because it's like, they're so limited. Like they're so, those people almost don't exist and are very small portions of society. So like to a certain degree, dude, but again, you should be trying to do this for yourself as much as possible, dude. All I'm hearing is like me, 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 deserve, 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 deserve. I need, I need, I need, it's your job to do it. Let's work together to create a world where everyone can access the things they need without barriers or discrimination. It just, ah, oh man, it just really depends on what you mean by discrimination, dude. Like, would you feel like you're discriminated against when the elevator stops working? Like, what if you went to like a Marshalls or something like that? And you're like, I want to shop today, but I physically can't walk up the stairs. And you went to the elevator and the guy's like, oh, sorry. Yeah, the elevator is just not working today. What are you going to do? Like file a clash a class, class action lawsuit against Marshalls because the elevator's not working? Things happen, okay? And like things are not always going to work for you all the time. And there are limitations to what we are capable of doing to a certain degree to make things more accessible for to certain people. And a good way to alleviate that thing is within your power, you should be trying to make the world better for yourself as much as you can. If you assume that this petition right here is solely about getting free seats for people of size, let me clarify. This petition is about ensuring that air travel is comfortable for everyone, regardless of their size. Yeah, but like these people have a very weird way of um, like unraveling this because, yes, in the process of making the chairs bigger, in the process of giving you leg room, you do realize that the price of those seats will go up. Like that's just a guarantee. Anytime you do any of this stuff, it's not like the it's not like these these airlines are going to they they have to make money okay they are entitled to their shareholders and because of that they have to try to make them as much money as humanly possible i mean we live in a capitalist society for for a reason so if you do that and the seats expand and the seats like get bigger and taller or whatever the fuck that price goes up. That price most definitely goes up. And I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel like this person is completely ignoring that as if it's like, we're just going to get the seats to be bigger and the plane somehow are going to expand out, which in a lot of cases, these planes are flying for 10, 15, 20 years at a time. Okay. And maybe even longer for some planes. And you're just sitting there going like, what do we do? We just like make them bigger on the inside, like the TARDIS from Doctor Who? No, obviously not. So like, there needs to be a give and take on everything. So when you make things bigger, the price goes up and you have less seats. Because if you have less seats, the price has to go up. Because for the same price, if you were selling three seats as opposed to two seats, because you can only fit two seats now in that same three seat spot, because you have now two seats there, 
then guess what? Somebody's going to have to pick up that one-third cost somewhere on that plane ticket. Um, and it's most definitely not going to be the airline. Most definitely not. This petition is about plus-size people, tall people, people with disabilities, and so many more. However, as a plus-size traveler myself, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and plus-size travelers everywhere who have also experienced discomfort and discrimination while traveling. It's... Flying is such an, I feel, I think I read a statistic not too long ago that most people in America have never flown, which makes sense because like flying is such an incredible privilege. Me, myself, I've only taken a flight maybe once in my life, I think. And um, it wasn't uncomfortable for me. I was in the middle seat and there was two big men next to me. I had no problem, right? Because I'm a smaller guy. So it wasn't a big deal. Most people are nice people in general. So you almost never have to worry about that stuff. But it's like, what I'm basically hearing from this person is that in this very niche scenario of plus size flyers, which is going to be niche, you do want free seats. You do want accessibility devices, which I understand why you would want those things because you can't fit in a conventional seat and you have to buy two seats and you don't want to have to buy those two seats. So you think the solution is to make the seats bigger or have a petition for people to make things more accessible, i.e. either making the seats bigger or um, free seats for fat for fat people, right? But you're ignoring one, the, the price of those plane tickets don't just go away. They don't just get waived. Somebody has to pick up that price ticket somewhere. Nothing's free. And then also, you're ignoring that like, dude, this is an, a very anomalous, a very anomalous thing, okay? Most people don't fly. You're flying. You are in a very privileged class to be fat and flying simultaneously. You should be trying to take your own life in your own hands in the sense of like, you should be trying to make your life better, right? Like that, I think everybody should be. You should be 100% trying to make your life better every day for society. It's too easy to just cede your responsibility on society or I guess airlines. We are calling on the FAA to require that all airlines implement a clear customer size policy. So like free seats, like free free seats or whatever. Like, do I get a free seat? Can I can I identify as a plus size person and get a free seat or no? This policy should include clear guidelines on accommodating larger passengers. Tra but you guys literally make it hard for yourselves to navigate the world, and then you expect us to pick up the tab because you guys want it to be bigger. And we're not talking about people that are 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds over. We're talking about people that are literally double, triple, quadruple the sizes that normal people should weigh. And we are expected to pick up the tab for that is insane. Why is there no accountability for yourselves? Why can you not look in the mirror and do something for yourselves? I don't, I think that obviously you guys should be able to take the crutches if you need to, bro. But dude, it's too easy for you guys to sit there and blame everybody else and say that we need to do it. It should be up to you guys most of Travelers the time. Travelers of size often face physical discomfort and health risks when forced to occupy only one seat on an airplane. So two seats, bro? It's gonna like, the way I'm looking at it is like, dude, there's gonna be a level of discomfort no matter what you're doing, right? Like if you're doing laundry or you have to go to the grocery store or whatever the fuck, it's gonna be discomfort the whole way through because like you don't wanna do this thing, right? So it's gonna be discomfort. And when you fly, yeah, like, dude, you're in a fucking tube in the sky going like a million miles per hour from one state to the next state or ne one country to the next. It's like time travel, right? Literally. But like, I understand that you want to be comfortable while you do it, but there's got to be a level of discomfort. People pay for the level of discomfort in time. Or like, for instance, if the plane ticket costs $100 and that person goes, okay, this plane ticket, right? We're going to make this. If you, if you ask almost anybody, you go, hey, listen. We're gonna make the plane tickets, right? We're gonna make the plane seats double the size. They're gonna be comfort, they're gonna be heated, there's gonna be more leg room. It's gonna be awesome. Are you on board? And that person's gonna go, yeah, what? Of course. And then you go, awesome. So you're gonna have to pay a trip, you're gonna pay one third more. So if your plane ticket was $100, it'd be like $133 or $140. That person would go, oh, uh, no, I'm all right. No, I'm, I'm actually okay. I'm totally fine with sitting in the seat that's already made as long as I have to pay this less, the, the lesser money. You know why? Because for not everybody has the comfort in mind. Some people are okay with sacrificing comfort and quality for, for, for cheapness. You understand? Like it's not worth it for a lot of people. So when you say this stuff, you're ignoring that there are probably majority of people are totally fine sitting in these seats. They'll acknowledge that they're small. They'll acknowledge that they're, they're not the best to sit in, but they're making that sacrifice because it's cheaper, because it's more convenient. You understand? So like you telling people objectively that they need to do this stuff for fat, for fat people, you're gonna lose a lot of people because most people don't look at it like that. This petition is not just about free seats for travelers of size. It's about creating a more inclusive and accessible environment for all. Yeah, but you're primarily looking at fat people, so. My ordeal at SeaTac Airport will shock you. This experience I'm about to share with you is yet another example of why employee sensitivity 
Training, a demand outlined in the plus-size travel petition, is desperately needed. I'm a plus-size wheelchair user and on a recent flight to the SeaTac airport. I requested wheelchair assistance, as I always do. Dude, this fucking music too, like this piano playing in the background. Like, what are we doing, dude? Is this like, I feel like this is the moment we found out that Nemo died in Finding Nemo, but it turned out he actually wasn't dead. You know that, like, is, what, is, what? Why are you? Why are you making this this music, dude? To make it more sincere or something like that? No, flight it's, to the no. SeaTac airport. I requested wheelchair assistance, as I always do. When it came time for me to deplane, I saw the employee who would be assisting me with my wheelchair waiting for me in the entry of the jet bridge. As I approached her and she realized she'd be assisting me and not one of the smaller passengers, she started to walk away with the wheelchair while making comments about my size. Even when I told her I really needed the chair and needed her to let me sit down in it, she blatantly ignored me and kept walking. I mean, obviously, that's I'm not going to like if this actually did happen, dude, that's really fucked up. Like you have a job. Your job is literally to do that. Like I get it. I understand that you don't want to do that particular activity. Like I know when I was working in an establishment and they were like, hey, David, um, I know that like we hired you as like a cashier. But um, listen, somebody really just like went into the bathroom and just blew it up. Like it's crazy. Like there's it's, it's just you need to go in there and you need to clean it up. And I would tell them, no, like, that's not what you hired me for. I'm, that's not, I'm not doing that. No, get somebody else to do it. It's not for me. Um, I get it. I really get it. But if, you, if you're literally hired for that job description and you're not doing it, like, what do you want from me? I understand also, though, I push people in wheelchairs, right? It's not as easy as a lot of people think it is. Okay? Like, if somebody weighs a lot, even if they weigh what they're supposed to weigh, it's still pretty difficult to push them in the chair. Sometimes you can't stop on time. I mean, think about it. You're literally pushing around a person who weighs like 130, 140, 150, 150, 60, 70, 80 pounds. And then triple it, quadruple that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really fucking difficult, especially if you're a normal sized person. And if you're like a small woman, yeah, it's going to be very difficult for you to stop or pull back. And it's going to be hard. I'm not like saying there isn't nuance on that particular front. But again, um, if it's your job, it's your job, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying she's right. J I'm not going to look. I'm not a disingenuous person. J Bay is not wrong here. Okay, if this did happen, she's not wrong here. That person should have, that, that person should, probably should have helped them. But it's also really unreasonable to even put people in these positions in general. Needed the chair and needed her to let me sit down in it. She blatantly ignored me and kept walking. I was then forced to walk up one of the longest jet bridges I've encountered and she didn't stop. Was she like in front of you the whole time, like tempting you with the wheelchair, like a like a like a holding a piece of meat in front of a dog and then every time you're about to get close take it away like what exactly was this transition did you not have your phone do you not like record it i guess look i'm not doubting this person i kind of am doubting this person but it's very easy for people to just say things that are happening and then not actually show what that is what's going on why didn't you pull out your phone why didn't you say anything did you say anything to the to the people in the front did you not like have a problem with any of this stuff did you not document any of that why did you not document any of that That'd be very easy for you just to whip out your phone and record and then see what's, you know what I'm talking about? Like, then you could have, you could have sued, probably. You could have probably made a lot of money off that. By the time she let me reach the wheelchair and sit down, my lips were white. What? Dude, where were you, first of all? Man, I'm gonna need to know the whole example here, dude. I'm gonna need to know all of it. So she did let you sit in the chair? How far did you walk? What exactly were we talking about, man? My oxygen levels had dropped and I almost fainted. This was my first time flying without oxygen. This woman- That's- if you need oxygen, dude, why are you flying without oxygen, dude? Like, why? Man, dude. These, like, this is what I always say. Like, it is a privilege to be able to have all this accessibility devices and things like that. Because, like, think about this, right? People, like, 100,000 years ago or whatever, you probably died if you had bad eyesight. You probably died if you were born with asthma. Or if you were born, like, drink, you, could, you were lactose intolerant. Like, if you couldn't drink milk, if you couldn't suck the sweet teat of that milk from that cow, you probably just died. Because, like, dude, we don't have anything else. Like, all we've, our entire, like, eight generations of family have been sucking on cow meat for, like, our entire lives. So, like, if you can't do that, then, like, I don't know what to tell you, bro. You're gonna have to die. That's just what it is. That's why, like, that's all it was for, like, a long time. Being in a society where there is ch wheelchair access, there is people that are gonna assist you with things like that, there are jobs specifically designed for these particular things, is such a privilege. It is such a privilege. And if you're going through problems like this, and I understand if you have a disability or something happens to you and you can't lose the weight, I get it. But for 99% of people, and you're ignoring the, the, the disability, it's possible for you to lose weight and improve your life. It's just what it is. I... 
I just think it's really, really terrible that you have to cede away all these responsibilities to somebody else. Like you're literally putting your life in the hands of somebody you don't even know. That's terrible. That's why here people always make fun of me for this. They always say, David, why are you wearing shoes in the house, right? I'm forever going to wear shoes in the house because if I don't, what if something happens? Like if somebody breaks in or there's a, a, a major accident or something happens, I want to know that I can run. I could sprint. I can get out. I want to always know that I'm I, I'm eligible to move whenever I can. That's why I don't do drugs. That's why I don't indulge in like any alcohols or whatever. Because I always want to be no. I always want to know that I can go places and not be impeded by myself. If that makes any sense. So, it, with that in mind, I think everybody should be trying to do that as much as they possibly can. Because if anything happens, dude, I mean, we're all like being coddled perpetually by the society that we're in. If you live in America, that is. Then. Like, I get it. Like, it's it's very easy to just stay sedative. But, dude, you got to try your hardest to try to make that hard, okay? You got to go out of your way, and you got to actually try to make your life a little bit, like, better by going to the gym, by eating less, by actually focusing on nutrition. Instead of, like, in these scenarios, focusing on, like, other people to try to help you out that's, like, tempting you with a wheelchair. I don't even understand the story. I would love to see the actual video to see if what, what actually happened here. Just assumed I could walk. Almost fainted. This was my first time flying without oxygen. This woman just assumed I could walk and would rather me do that. Instead of her having to push someone my size up the jet bridge, all the other attendants wheeled their passengers up the jet bridge, but my needs were disregarded. This is discrimination. Nobody should be treated this way. So like, you don't have the video, dude? You don't have the video? Cause it's like very easy for somebody to say this and not have a video, dude. I'm not, dude, everybody has a phone nowadays, dude. If you, if you're act, if this story is real, I don't know why you wouldn't record this. This is like a class. This is an actual lawsuit that you could have had. And instead you just didn't record it. Okay. I mean, I, uh, let me know if I'm being the one that's like insincere here, but it kind of seems weird to tell this big story about how a lady was not giving you a wheelchair when you could have just whipped out your phone and just recorded it. Right? No, no. Okay. Share your story at change.org plus size travel. Oh, that's it. Like you didn't, there's no follow up. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to sue the airline. Or I'm going to sue the airport. I'm going to sue it. No, none of that. Not like, oh, this was really bad. Okay. Well, I'm already doubting that story, dude. Honey, let me educate you real quick. No, just pay for two seats or do some push ups. <laughs> it's not as easy as doing two push ups. If you're this size, it's very difficult for somebody to do any type of exercise in general. So, but yeah, anyone. Anyway. First of all, those seats you're worried about. They're all mine. And they were paid for by a company that values me and knows plus size people deserve to travel. That's fine, dude. If you're getting paid, if somebody, if, if you're flying and a company goes, hey, listen, we're going to pay for your extra seat because we know that you're bigger. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Uh, that's uh, literally all I ask for. If you're going to take up two seats, pay for the two seats. That's all I ask for, dude. I just think it's like really fucked up that a lot of airliners will give free seats to people. But if you have a company or a private thing, whatever, they want to do that stuff, that's fine, dude. And even for the airlines, if they, if they want to do that, they can. I just think it's fucked up that I don't get seated. I don't get, I don't get treated the same way. It's a little bit of discrimination in the sense of like, you're getting a free seat on these airlines. Like what is it? American airlines or whatever. You're getting a free seat cause you're fat and I'm not getting a free seat cause I'm thin, which is crazy. That's literally discrimination. But I guess to a certain degree, there is levels of discrimination that are completely fine. And even in our society, it's fine to discriminate against certain peoples. Um, like for instance, men are not allowed in women's bathrooms and so on and so forth. We're okay with discrimination like that. But I just think it, it is kind of weird that you're getting preferential treatment. Comfortably just like everybody but else. let's get real. Plus size passengers should always have the space. They need to travel comfortably without- Yeah, but like what you're asking for is very, very- it's just too easy to say these words, but have nothing behind them. Like you can easily say like, oh yeah, we deserve extra free seats. We deserve extra space. Why? Why do you think that you deserve more than the next person over? Because you're bigger than them? If anything, that would be an indicator that you don't deserve it since like you don't care about yourself in a very fundamental way and other people should have to pick up the tab for you. Like it's such a weird way of looking at your life, dude. Can you imagine like never taking accountability for yourself at all to, to, to such a degree that like even though you're getting free seats from like a company or whoever is giving you these free seats, you're still going like, but I shouldn't have to pay for this? Why? Who are you, first of all, dude? Why do you think you're, why do you think that your comfort is more important than everybody else's? extra charges just like the one person yeah but like you're not the one person like these people are literally 
they they always like to compare themselves to like me or you or like a normal person you're not a normal person dude you're literally abnormal in the sense of like what your body size is and if you're gonna sit there and go we should have the same accessibility as the person that's thinner you do the difference is that you're not thinner so you're not going to be able to fit in the same seat or have the same leg room or all this other stuff because that person is thinner and they don't automatically take up more space. You understand? Like, how can you say that? You're not the same person. It's That's such a dumb thing to say. That's like somebody going like, oh, oh, trucks should have the same uh, uh, big giant trucks, like 18 wheelers hauling like 40,000 pounds in the back should have the same they should take up the same space as regular cars, but you're not a regular car. How the fuck are we going to condense a giant 18 wheeler truck in the same size as like a Prius? That doesn't how that, that's not how that works. You, you, you got to accompany the size of your body for how you work. Like that's why when they have trucks, right, there are places for like trucks to slow down early because the brakes are not that good and things such and so forth. Like you need to actually take some accountability here, J-Bay. One fair policy in Canada suggests, but while you're busy counting seats, I'll be over here continuing to advocate to change the status quo so everybody is treated fairly. Yeah, but like, that's the thing though. You are treated fairly. You're just outside the realm of what everybody else is. Like the majority of people don't have to deal with this, but you're different. So you have to look at this, this situation differently. How about that for a push up? Okay. Really, really proved a point there, J-Bay. Really, really did something there. Let's get something straight. Access to public transportation, including air. You don't deserve anything. You're you're the size of three people and you pay for three seats. Simple. Yeah, I mean, hey. Let's get something straight. Access to public transportation, including air travel, is a civil right. Depending on the country. That means plus size people do deserve to travel comfortably and with- But hold up. You can't just throw in public transportation, okay? Airliners are not public transportation. That Maybe she said that. Public transportation, including air travel, dude. You first of all, air travel is not public transportation. That's she's purposely doing this on purpose, dude. Because if you throw in public transportation, then suddenly it's up to the government. But obviously, air travel is a private industry. Okay, like they might be subsidized to a certain degree by the government, but they're majority all privatized. So like Delta, JetBlue, fucking Spirit, these are all private corporations that are owned by their shareholders. So, like, the government may give them money, but they're not owned by the government. So, like, that's a stupid thing to say. So, like, oh, my God, it's so bad to say this because, like, what she's actually saying here is because she threw in the public transportation, she can say it's a civil right, but it's not public transportation. So, it's not a civil right. That's, oh, my God, bro. This woman is reaching, bro. She's literally saying literal total wrongness. Everything here is literally wrong. But she's saying it and like nobody else is going to critique her for this. I mean, obviously I am, but this is all wrong. Literally, this entire statement stream, this dialogue chain is wrong flat out. Is a civil right. That means plus size people do deserve to travel comfortably. And But that's not what that means, though, because, it, OK, if it was a civil right, even civil rights have limits on what they can do. Like if you're talking about public transportation and you go, it's a civil right to have public transportation, you probably are right, depending on the state. Right. Some states don't have the best public transportation system, but even in states where there are, is public transportation, it's it's going to be standardized, okay? So, like, for instance, I live in Massachusetts. We have a pretty good train system here. It does break down, like, every other week, though. But anyway, our seats on these trains are very small. So, I would take up a seat. Would J-Bay take up a seat? No. She'd take up two or three seats. So, even in public transit, even in public, in the public space, you still are being held back by, by restrictions on what the state can do. They can't do everything. And even if, like, a wheelchair user came in. You have to get up and move. If there's an older person that needs that seat, you have to get up and move, okay? These are things that are built in. You understand? Now, granted, she'd probably fit into those categories where she's disabled or she's a wheelchair user or she's older, whatever the fuck. She would be able to do that. But the point I'm making is even in public situations under civil rights laws, there are going to be limitations. That, that the, civil rights laws, civil, the civil rights laws, when it comes to that stuff, I mean, this, none of this is even relevant, by the way, because we're talking about literal air care. Like, it, you know what I'm talking about? Like, this, this is completely irrelevant. But if we're talking about that public transportation, 
even on those particular sides, bro, you're literally still limited by a lot of things. Without discrimination. Money being a big thing. Taxpayer dollars, they don't go forever. It's not about entitlement. It's about basic human rights. But the, the thing is, like, because you're saying that, oh, man, this person is saying so buzzword bingo, bro. Literally, this is literally buzzword bingo. Just saying as many buzzwords as you possibly can. And then people just think it's good. You know, it's like that meme. You ever see that meme of like Lois Griffin going on stage on Family Guy and then she was like racism bad and people are like, yeah, 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 yeah. 9 11 bad oh yeah, 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 yeah like that's what it is here basically like p if people hear enough buzzwords i think she thinks that people are just gonna go yeah, she's right discrimination discomfort entitlement body rights human rights public space like that's you know all these words in the same sentence are basically gonna make people go like she's right oh my god dude all this stuff is completely right and it's so meaningless dude like you have to you give up comfort for price you give up comfort for 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 certain for certain rights that you have here everybody should be able to fly safely and comfort that's everybody should be able to fly safely sure and comfortably is also not true it's not that they should people are willing to give up comfort for pricing or other things just we, as they and we shouldn't be opposed to that okay like there should be an option there in the same way that i think when like when people ask me david do you think that we should ban foods that are like over overproduced or like not overproduced but like um like really really saturated foods or foods that have a lot of fat or uh over processed foods and things like so forth I was, i'm always gonna say the same thing no i think that these foods should exist but i think you should be the one that decides if you want to eat them i love i love mcdonald's doesn't mean i'm gonna eat there every single day but i'll eat there like once a month maybe um i want that to be an option i just hope that you make the right decision we shouldn't be like banning things because certain people can't control themselves. That doesn't even necessarily solve the problem. War on drugs, dude? Like, what are you talking about? Like, if you take away things that people have access to it, and it make, you make it harder, all you're going to do is you're going to just stop the people that you're not actually, you're just going to make it harder for the people that are going to do it rightly, if that makes any sense. The people that are going to do it illegally or people that are going to do it badly, they're going to do that regardless. They are. And let's address the common misconception. My extra seats are always paid for. Doesn't That's mean good. I agree that plus size people should have to pay more. See, I don't have a problem with her paying for the seat. If she paid for the seat, fine. But her like her ideology is literally, I shouldn't have to. So, yeah. Because I don't think we should have to pay more for the space that we physically need. Yeah, but you're not paying more for the same space. You're paying more for more space. That's the thing. I'm not paying more. I'm not paying more for the seat that I have. I'm paying literally the same price. And you're paying for two seats because you need two seats. I'm not doing that. I don't need two seats. Why should I have to be punished because you need two seats? That doesn't make sense. Your comment that implies I don't deserve anything because I'm fat is exactly why I'm fat. That's not what they're saying. First of all, they're just saying in general, you don't deserve anything in general. There was a period there, okay? Um, I get they carried through here, but the point is like, you live in a privileged country. The deserve aspect of that is going to be very, very stretched. Fighting. I'm fighting so other plus size people don't have to deal with your negativity and discrimination. It's not discrimination, dude. And but man, I'm sick of people just saying like, oh yeah, discrimination bad in general. It's not bad. There are plenty of things that you discriminate against. You discriminate against that that off brand ketchup. You discriminate against that fucking that one water bottle that you don't like to drink from or whatever, dude. You discriminate against that bathroom that you walked into and there was poop on the floor. You discriminate against that. There are plenty of things that you discriminated against and it's fine. So like, I'm, I just hate when people we use We all these deserve words. respect and dignity regardless of size. It's it just depends on what you mean. You can't expect everybody to be respectful of you. That's not how that works. People have their own thoughts and, and abilities, man. You can't just expect that. Like if you're, this person literally can't take accountability. It's not about, you can't expect people to just respect you. You're gonna, that's a losing battle. It's time the airline industry recognized this and took steps to ensure it. I love how she says it's public and then says the airline industry. Here's a powerful reminder as we strive for a more equitable and inclusive world. Let us remember that mobility is not a privilege, but a basic human right. That yeah, but you're making it harder for yourself to move. Like it, that's like, you're literally stacking weight on yourself and then you're upset that you can't move. And then instead of blaming yourself for stacking the weight on yourself, you're instead blaming society and that doesn't make any sense like you're doing it to yourself right and now you're upset that the people around you like there are repercussions because you're you're bigger like that doesn't make any that's like literally a guy taking a saw and just sawing off his leg okay purposely he writes a whole manifesto about it like i i, I hate my leg my leg sucks i hate it sucks like cuts off the leg takes the leg throws it out the fucking window 
and then goes outside and has to hop around and goes, why do I have to hop around? This is crazy. Like, I should never have to hop around. There should be, like, an extra leg just waiting for me that I can just, like, implant on myself. Like, you understand? Like, that's basically the same thing. You're, you're asking for extra stuff because you put yourself in a scenario that's going to be harder for you to move. You understand? And you're blaming us for it. Must be available. Affordable. First, I don't think tall people should have to pay extra for seats that accommodate them either. There's a difference between paying for extra leg room solely for comfort and needing it to be safe and fly with dignity. What do you mean fly with dignity, bro? What is, man, what is up with these people using these words, man? Why is it that when average size people bring up airplane seats being too small, it's valid? <sighs> because they're approaching it in a different setting compared to you. It's the context, bro. If a thin person brings up this seat is small, okay? Odds are that person is probably justified in the sense of like, if they're small, they probably really have an issue about it, right? That That's probably a big issue. But if you're fat, you're going to have an issue with like 99% of almost everything that we make. So when you say, I'm bigger, I'm a fat person, and this plane seat is too small for you, I know everything is going to be too small for you. You cannot literally fit in almost everything. So if a thin person says it, you're not the same person. Stop trying to compare yourself to people that have different different problems compared to you. You're not in the same category. You are in a way, way, way off the off the deep end category compared to a thin person. It's not the same. But when plus size people bring it up, they're the villain. Ex exactly. Because you're you're complaining about something that you can you can solve. Explain that. Within within. OK, I'm going to always preference it. If you're not disabled or like if you're if you can't lose weight, you should. After four years, the time has come to fly without oxygen. What if I have a medical emergency on the plane? What if I'm not strong enough? Then just fly with oxygen. Like, these things should just not be issues. Like, I I'm sorry, dude. If you need oxygen, then take the oxygen. I don't know. Like, what is even the point about this? What is this music, dude? Like, are this like your superhero entrance? Like, oh, yeah, I'm so strong now because I don't have to fly with oxygen. But you're literally complaining that you might suffer some major complications because you don't have it. Then take the oxygen. Why are you not taking the oxygen? What if I cause an emergency landing? What if this doesn't work? What if everyone online is right? What if I can never travel again? No, forget that. No matter what they say and no matter what it looks like, travel is for everybody. What the fuck is this logic stream? Like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna travel with oxygen, even though I literally might cause an entire problem, like an emergency landing or like people are gonna be major consequences for this. Fuck that, fuck that shit. I'm gonna do it anyway. Watch me. Watch me cause problems. Even though I know this is going to be a complete problem, it's going to be an issue, and I'm literally I'm literally gambling right now. I'm like tossing the fucking dice. You're literally saying that, and you're going like, it's oh well. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> that's, what, that's basically what I'm hearing from you, bro. Craziness, bro. This woman is literally saying the quiet part out loud. Forget that. No matter what they say, and no matter what it looks like, travel is for everybody. Travel is for everybody, so watch me do something bad. <laughs> so powerful wow j bay looking good in that those glasses look good on her damn bro that's so disrespectful to have this guy lean over like that just to see the man who is it bro is this your boyfriend is this your husband doing this man he is really fucking you he's really fucking you up right now okay it's your girl Jay, and today I'm in Las Vegas, and I'm trying something that I'm really excited about, the Fat Shack. Y'all know I'm fat. I love anything with the name fat in it, so I'm really excited to try this. I got these boneless buffalo fingers right here. I mean, really think about this right now, right? This woman is literally complaining that she doesn't get free seats on a plane. What are we looking at right here? What is this? Huh? Fat Shack, dude? Watching this? and You, you look back. At all the things, right? And then you see her going fast food places, dude. Because she, you know what? Because it's fat. It has fat in the name. So I had to go. I'm about to give them a try. All right. I love chicken. And I love anything spicy. So, yup. Yup. Mmm. <laughs> Those are like a 8 out of 10 for sure. What a beautiful yep. person. All right, let me try these fries. I mean, like, <laughs> complaining about the free seats and then making this video is awesome. It's just awesome. It's just the icing on the cake, isn't it? I knew I had to, I knew when I put this video together, I knew I had to put this one on, on the last bro. Just to, sh you know, all the, 
all the I'm a superhero talk. I deserve this. I deserve that because I'm so fat. I deserve to have a, a accessibility options and then see this. And then you go, oh, damn, that shit is really like the critical hit. You know what I'm talking about? That's the one that does the most damage. This shit right here should seal the deal. I love a good cheese fry, y'all. Yeah, but like, man, come on. Come on, dude. I mean, I like cheese fries too, but I ain't buying that shit. I'm not going out of my way. Yeah, you know what I bought today? A watermelon. Yeah, I bought a watermelon. And I'm going to have some of that watermelon today, dude. It's going to be awesome. I didn't buy cheese fries. I could have, but I didn't because, uh, oh, man, watermelon tastes so good in my mouth. I love the flavor. I'm not even black either. You know how they always say, like, black guys like watermelon? White dudes like watermelon, dude. Forget about the black dudes like a watermelon. It's the white dudes that like the watermelon, dude. That's a, that's a, that's a lie. I've only ever seen white dudes buying watermelon at the at the grocery store. I mean, obviously, there are black dudes buying it, too. But you know what I'm saying. Damn. Mm. Dude, like, she puts it in her mouth for a second and goes, mm-hmm. It's not that good. Like, you, you didn't even register the flavor. These people don't have taste buds anymore. No slap. That cheese is so gooey. Bro, you're like 40. What do you mean they slap? Get your shit together. So warm, yummy. Mm. Last thing. I got these mock sticks right here. How many how many calories do you think this all is? How many calories do you think this like what is this the 20 piece? God damn, that's a lot of food. 20 piece, the fries and the mozzarella sticks and she got a full soda, not even to mention the armada of dipping sauces that she has as well. This has got to be at least 2000 calories, right? Maybe even a little bit more if I'm being honest with you, dude. You cannot maintain this size and eat regular food. You got to be eating 5, 6, 7000 calories a day easily, too. So when you watch this video, right, when you went through this video and you saw her complaining about how not being able to get accessibility devices and things like that, think about this video too. And think about who's putting who in what scenario. Love a good mod stick. Oh, look at that cheese pool. Yup. Dude, you're like fucking 40, bro. Why are you doing these? All right. I think I need some oxygen right after this, dude. Mmm. That slaps. The epitome of <laughs> the epitome of privilege, but it does slap. True, super slap, ultra slap. You know what else slaps? Water. Water slaps. No cap. Okay. Water slaps. No cap should be the new statement of the day. Okay. Drink your water. Ensure that you're hydrated, especially on hot days. It's like 90 here today, and I'm drinking a lot of water, dude. I'm drinking so much water that I'm turning into basically a fish. I'm gonna be suckling on the wall soon because those are my favorite fish, the sucker fishes. But uh, think about this situation, okay? Think about somebody that's complaining about all that stuff and then sits there and eats 2,000, 3,000 calories worth of fast food. I mean, it's just a beautiful situation, dude. Truly the epitome of privilege while claiming they deserve all of this. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. I'm very interested in hearing what you have to say. Please comment. I need to know what you have to say. Um, if you could do that stuff, by the way, if you uh, like, comment, subscribe, that'll help me in the algorithm. So if you could do that stuff, I'd appreciate it tremendously. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in water because I love water. Water is my favorite thing to drink. Um, besides your personality, of course, because your personality is so incredibly lubricated. I love the way that you emanate off the day and the way that you, you navigate through the world and how you care about yourself first and foremost, which should be the goal. Care about yourself and then everybody else is secondary, but in the act of taking care of yourself, you're making everybody else's lives around you better. You should be selfish when it comes to taking care of yourself. Please take care of yourself. Do it right. Do it hard. Take care of yourself hard every day too. Do it every day. Drink the water, eat the breakfast, go to the gym, take care of yourself hard every single day. That should be the mission. Always compare yourself to yourself. You're an amazing person. I know you're doing well. Good job, by the way, on being such an amazing person. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord. It's all going to be linked in the description of the channel and the description of this video. All you got to do is click the about and you'll see. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.